12 riders chasing him now. And Holt is still there too in the background. No, I think that's a decent gap on this gradient. It kind of foreshortens ever so slightly because it was on a very steep section. It does flatten off now. Just got to keep the speed across this section because we know that it does kick towards the top once again. Be interesting to see that group behind on this section of road to see if anyone takes it on to keep the speed within the group because it is the kind of section of road if they've gone really hard on that previous steeper section and everyone looks around at someone else to take it on. There can be a lull in the action that gap immediately goes out to Martinez once again they're onto the rough road now as well it gets rougher and narrower too and then they turn left onto the uh, the final part of the Montfaucon which they haven't yet done today Adney Halter here just about to be caught by an extremely select leading group of what must be about 10 riders I think if that uh, there Ian one of the Total Energies riders coming across as well this might be Jordan Gigiat and check a race number good to see they've had a very active today today being set up by Alexi Vuillemos who was attacking earlier too um, Decathlon are going to want to get something out of this day aren't they and uh, now I think we see Felix Gould just trying to close down that rider now here's the man who struck out very early at the base of this final climb he's just 19 seconds in it's not massive this, it's jumpable. If there's someone who's feeling sprightly and strong enough in that second group, Martinez is working really hard. Um, he's an incredibly impressive, explosive climber, but he never he never looks that easy to my eye, I always find. Victor Long Langelotti sitting third wheel for Borgos Biaccio, one of the best climbers in this race, the Monegasque rider in purple. But you know what I mean about Martinez? He's not as, he's not a sort of as, as fluid a climber as you might expect. He does bob and rock a fair bit. No, when he's going quickly up a climb, you can certainly see the effort that's going into the bike. And you just wonder whether an explosive rider like Cepeda can jump on that final section. But down to 900 metres to go now and still up over 20 seconds. It's going to take a huge effort or a huge explosion of the legs of Martinez if anything's going to change now. As we see Ooh. one of those big explosive moves. Yeah, Nangelotti obviously feeling good today. The only pro rider from uh, from Monaco that races at this level, and he's always an impressive climber when it's tough, tough terrain as well. Martinez just keeps getting out of the saddle. Little kicks to keep it moving. He was right in play last year in amongst all the late attacks, but he came second on that occasion. This year, not wanting to wait, because when he was beaten uh, last year by Victor Lafay, I remember him banging the bars. He was really frustrated at coming second, not quite timing his sprint right either. He doesn't want any of that today, Lenny Martinez. He's gone extremely early, but boy, is he working hard. Where is Langelotti? Because I think it's coming back in. It does look that way, and I think Martinez is more than rocking now. I think he's rolling. He might be in trouble to stay on the podium here at this rate, and uh, David Godou is coming too. Wow, I said it was going to take a huge effort to close down that 20-second gap, and exactly what we got on this climb from Langelotti. He hasn't done too much this season so far. 14th GC Tour Basque Country. That's all pretty much to write home about. Look straight over the top of Martinez. Wow, what a ride by the Monegas Pro. This is awesome for Burgos Biaccio, catching one of the hottest climbing prospects in the world right now. And I don't think Martinez can hang on. I'm not sure he can. He looks back to Godu, and I'm not sure Godu's got what it takes to come with him. I think we're going to see Langelotti going by himself. Burgos Biaccio could be looking at one of the biggest wins of their season so far this year. But Langelotti must be aware he has Martinez with him. They're into the final, what, 200 metres? And Langelotti is not looking back. I don't know whether he thinks he's dropped Martinez, but that has not happened just yet and Martinez has a very fine turn of speed come the finish that's the finishing straight this is where Martinez messed things up last year and didn't get the win I think he's going to take it this time though Langelotti's done a bit too soon what a comeback by Lenny Martinez in a week where he's been all over the cycling news and that is why what an answer what a comeback in so impressive on the Montfaucon the man who's uh, been talked up so much this week about potential moves for next year well he's answered it in the best way possible but boy did he have to work for that 
Wow, what a final kilometer. I said a huge effort to jump across that gap. It's exactly what we got. But in the end, it was just too much of an effort to hang on all the way to the line. Martinez just hung in there. It looked like he was going to get dropped with around 200, 250 meters to go. But just hanged in there long enough for Langelotti's legs to completely go with around about 100, 150 meters to go. And Martinez, like you say, was able to use that turn of speed come round him in that final corner and win quite comfortably in the end. Wow. That is his third one-day victory, or third victory, I should say, of the year, Danny Martinez. As I say, I thought... I did. I, I said in commentary, Ian, and I was wrong, totally wrong, but I said in commentary, oh, dear, he's going to struggle to stay on the podium at this rate because I thought he looked like he'd cracked badly. There's a sprint from the remaining group from behind as well. I think I saw Felix Gore coming across the line for third... But we'll check that when we get the result coming through to us finally. What a comeback. I have to say, brilliant ride by uh, Victor Langelotti. I think he would have deserved the win there. But credit to Lenny Martinez. Boy, did he regroup. And I remembered it reminded me of the finish last year. He was he was devastated at being bit beaten by Victor Lafay up here on top of Montfaucon. Faucon, and he was not going to have that happening again this time. No, he took it out early. In the end, just about hung on. You wonder whether Angelotti, if he'd gone a little bit earlier and then could have kind of got to the wheel of Martinez, gathered himself and then gone again. But I think he did the right thing, just going straight over the top because he definitely had Martinez on the ropes but ran out of power himself in the final uh, 150 metres. It's a cracking finale, this one. It's the first of two brilliant finishing days as well. Tomorrow's Tour de Jura is equally as beautiful and impressive. I do hope you've enjoyed the Franche Comte day today. We're not done just yet, because we'll bring you the podium presentation from that very podium right there. In fact, the pictures we're showing you right now, I think, are coming from that white van <laughs> with the little... Uh, with the little dish on top of it. Isn't it wonderful? You get to see the inner workings of, of our broadcasting here. Pictures being beamed down to those two dishes on top of that scissor-like crane there from the plane overhead and the helicopters. And then uh, your picture, I think, being beamed up from that white van. There'll almost certainly be a little editing suite in there and people cutting together this fantastic footage you are seeing. Ian Field and Jez Cox here bringing you the commentary laid over the top of what our fantastic production team on the ground there are doing locally in the French Comte. What a view back across Besançon, looking down to the Doube Valley beneath, beautiful lush green hills. As we said, feeling at times like the rolling foothills of the, um, the Swiss Alps or something on the edge of the far east of France, looking westward there, where it's much, much flatter, of course. And we're in those interlocking hills separated by the fantastic Doube River home of course as i haven't mentioned this year but home ian as you will know i'm sure home to the rare and beautiful zebra trout Q <laughs> amazement <laughs> ian's jaw just dropped as i said it he, he's literally speechless <laughs> yeah the zebra trout quite a rare fish but uh, abounding in the the river do there's your top 12 in actual fact for you lenny martinez uh, doing what i said he wouldn't even staying on the podium, he came back and won. Brilliant ride by Victor Langelotti, the Monagas rider for Borgos Biaci. David Godou, looking at one point like he was chasing Lenny Martinez down, but none of it. He was also on the podium. Han van Hooker, it was the Belgian for Lotto Destiny up there. Felix Gaul winning that sprint just behind him, ahead of uh, Hefferson Cepeda, the Ecuadorian for uh, Caja Rural. Ewan Costu, the Frenchman for Arkea b and And then... The first of the decathlon riders, Clément Berthet, in eighth after all that work by the team who were looking to dominate today. Clément Berthet was their best rider in the end, in eighth place.